Thank you so much, Sir, for this opportunity that you have given me to be able to share what I have uh, with um, every delegate that is attending this meeting today. Um, if you can hear what I'm saying, um, Mr. Moderator, can you just confirm so that I know that people can hear me? Crystal clear. Th th thank you, Sir. So as been explained, uh, I'm Andrew Nyamayaro. I'm a lawyer uh, for 20 plus years now. I got admitted initially in Zimbabwe in the year 2000. Um, then I practiced some years in Zimbabwe, and then I relocated to the United Kingdom, where for a few years I did uh, various other jobs. Um, being the diaspora, I had to do other jobs to have a survival. Uh, including working in warehouses, care work, cleaning, and so forth, until I requalified again to become a lawyer and a solicitor in the United Kingdom to where I am at the moment where I've established the firm uh, to the current position. I want to appreciate all the leaders, uh, particular mention to the pastor um, and uh, his wife, and I also want to appreciate everyone that is attending today. My presentation today is not a debate on, on the law. It's just a presentation on the law because I know that there is a lot of debate that happen, uh, particularly uh, when it comes to the issue of the law. Um, people normally want to debate, should we follow the law of the man or the law of God? Um, but um, as we are on earth, we are also living among us the laws that have been made by people that need to be observed. As to uh, the canon law or ecclesiastic law debate, that one I leave it to the pastor because he's the one who is more qualified uh, to do that than myself. Having mentioned that um, when it comes to the law, you will realize that the law has taken so many years to develop. The, your, the law has taken thousands and thousands and thousands of years to develop. Um, it started uh, being just simple, people getting together, uh, putting simple rules. They see that the rules become laws over time. They become codified. Um, and uh, as a necessity uh, detects, more laws uh, are made and, and going forward. So you will realize that uh, as sources of law, we do have uh, customary law, which uh, is developed uh, through the customary and the tradition of people. And also religion is also contributed to um, aspects of law, because even as we read through the Bible, we see that there is some laws that have been established for people to be able to live together in harmony and in peace and to establish boundaries for each other. Uh, the other source of law that exists um, is um, parliamentary law or a law that is statutory law that is made through the parliament. Um, I, I think for people that are here, you will realize that when it comes to the government, the government has got three arms. It has got um, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. So the, leg the parliament, uh, which is the legislature, is the one which makes the statutory laws, uh, which uh, codifies the law um, that people have to follow. And uh, the executive is the one that will be leading the government. And the judiciary is also there to then enforce the law that has been made by uh, the legislature. And in enforcing and interpreting the law, uh, the judiciary is again, uh, in a way, making the law. Because the, the judiciary might agree with what the legislature said or might challenge it or might modify what the, the, the legislature have said. But uh, that is um, another topic for another day. So the laws that are there that govern us today have been laws that have been there for several years. It continues to, um, to develop. Um, it continues to, to be made. You know, so quite recently, for example, worldwide, uh, there was a COVID-19 um, pandem pandemic, which is still there. Um, and during the pandemic, uh, the 
most nations, if not all the nations, had to come up with rules for lockdown, rules for uh, restrictions, uh, traveling, and so forth. So it, it shows how dynamic uh, the law is um, <clears throat> over time. So my experience, uh, the topic that I had given, you know, it's just about um, life and law. I, I, like I said, I'm not going to be very technical about the law and maybe some of the things that we will learn, we'll learn it more through a conversation that we might have uh, through questions that might be asked. Um, South Africa and Zimbabwe share similar laws. Um, as you all know, in uh, history, um, when the settlers came, they came um, to South Africa and then they made their way through to Zimbabwe. And um, that way, um, then the, 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 uh, when the Dutch came and then the English came, and um, during over time, uh, there was um, a unification of the law, the Dutch law and uh, the English law. And the system um, that we have there is called the, uh, the Roman Dutch law. But however, that law as well is, is also influenced by uh, aspects of the law from um, the United Kingdom um, as they were part of the colonizers that were colonizing um, South Africa and, and, and Zimbabwe. So it's a part of the Dutch, um, the Roman and Dutch law. But over time, like I've said, I've um, practiced um, in Zimbabwe and I've practiced in, in the United Kingdom, uh, England, and Wales, to be specific. Um, and I've been, a, I am a Christian, um, for God knows for how long now, um, since 1993. Um, that's when I, I, I became a Christian. And um, I, I then went to university in 1996. And it, it was not an easy decision for me to then pick on law. Um, Having known what um, label or what name is given to lawyers by people and having seen what some other lawyers do. Some lawyers do work uh, not in a straightforward way. Some lawyers, uh, you know, uh, they lie, they um, do not perform, they, they don't have the interest of their clients at heart and so forth. And uh, it would appear the word lawyer was equated, equated to the word liar and so forth. So it was all... Oh, um, uh, if I become a lawyer, I may not getting myself on the highway to hell. But um, we still have uh, uh, Christian lawyers, and I've also known uh, Christian lawyers um, over the time. Um, when I was at university, we I, I used to attend uh, the Apostolic uh, Faith Mission on, on campus, and uh, we used to have brothers who were also lawyers and brothers who had, and sisters who had also different um, qualifications. That they, that they were having. So over time, uh, the things that I'm talking about today is things that I've observed um, that I think impact on day-to-day -day life of people um, and particularly of my brethren who are Christians. You know, there is always a dilemma that is there in people's lives because in terms of our lives, um, the, we, are, we are governed by a lot of aspects. We are governed by the culture that we have grown in. We, have gov we are governed by uh, the environment. The environment influences what we do. Uh, the culture that we are in influences what we do. Um, our beliefs uh, influence what we do, who we are. And on top of that as well, we have got uh, the law that also has to to influence uh, what we do. And remember, as always said, um, ignorance of the law is not defense. You might be someone who is speaking in tongues. You might be someone who knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. Uh, if you commit a, a crime and uh, the police are going to come and get you uh, um, uh, and um, they're going to arrest you and um, deal with you accord in accordance to the law. Like I said, I'm not debating on whether the law is good or bad. Uh, that is another decision for another time. But the bottom line is whether we like it or not, we are in the existing in a world that has got laws. Whether you agree with the law or not, if it is there, it is there. And maybe you want, if you want to challenge it, there's always processes of challenging the law, the uh, validity, the legality, 
uh, and the lawfulness of those particular laws that people might want to challenge. Recently in America, there's been um, a, a decision that has been made uh, relating to abortion, for example, um, the, the, that um, has caused a lot of debate um, and a lot of uh, emotions among uh, different people and, and, and so forth. So, in my comments, I've said that there's a lot of things that, that influence us, for example, in, in, in our culture where well, uh, we do have a culture of uh, the husband or the belief of the husband being the head of the family and the wife um, being um, um, subordinate to the husband and the children and so forth. But when it comes to the law, um, you know, everyone is equal before the law. Uh, I'm now speaking about things like family life, where people before the law, the husband and the wife, uh, are, uh, are the same before the law, um, and uh, anyone is entitled to their human rights and they're entitled to their protection, even if um, someone went to pay for a ball like someone's parents and um, he was given the hand in marriage. I have seen um, some brothers being taken away by the police because, you know, uh, they have um, said, uh, you know, I'm the father here, I'm, I'm the man here, and um, I should do what I do. You are the wife, should always listen and so forth. And then they lift their hand to discipline the wife uh, through um, domestic violence and so forth. So those are some of the shortfalls that people have uh, fallen into. and. Um, um, I, I know that um, in so many countries, if you commit uh, offenses like domestic violence, then you are going to be dealt with the law. Um, some jurisdictions, some people might get away with it through um, paying um, through the back door to the officials to be let to be let free. So there is family life. You have to know that um, the, within the family, uh, the the family members have got rights. The children have got rights. Um, I'll give an example for here in the UK where um, people have had their children taken away by social service or people have risked their children being taken away simply because they've smacked their children. So there could be laws about, against smacking children. There could be laws against um, even uh, some people who have just uh, said, I'm just going to go to the shops for five minutes and then I'll come back and something um, happens um, before they realize it. They, the police are there and the children are being taken into care and then there's social service that is involved and so forth. So there is laws that are govern our families and I want to just um, emphasize this to brethren that um, there are other ways that we can deal with uh, when it comes to household issues, um, equality and uh, contributions financially and things like that within the, the family. Having yeah, mentioned that as well, I want to comment on another aspect that I have seen that people, particularly uh, people of um, African origin, uh, intentionally or by uh, era, do not really give importance to. We spend a lot of time working. We spend a lot of time going up and down, you know, doing two or three jobs um, and um, we, we build a house there and here and so forth. We, we do what we do. And uh, in the background of our minds, we are doing what we are doing for the benefit of our family, our, especially our immediate family or your spouses, your children. And um, But for some reason, we think that we are going to live in eternity. And, uh, you know, life, God knows about life than us. Um, even if we, are, we might be young in your 30s or 40s or 20s, um, anything can happen and normally when it happens, um, unfortunately, maybe someone passes away and there is no clear cut way of which that person has said as to how their property is going to be distributed. And where someone, for example, dies without a will, we say that that person has died interested without a will. If someone dies with a will, then they've died um, tested because they've detected what is going to do to happen to their property. Um, after they die, not only their property, it could be their property, the custody and guardianship of their children, your own um, burial, your own burial wishes. Um, we have had cases whereby we have had sometimes to go to court uh, where one family member is saying we want the, the, the deceased to be buried 
in the United Kingdom. The other family members are saying wanting to be buried um, in Zimbabwe, but because there is no uh, will that has been left, um, you know, sometimes I've had to go to court to, for the court to give a decision. Uh, and where there is that case where there's no a will, then it, it, it is also affected as to who in the lineage or in the, in the, in the rights of uh, inheritance has got more power to say whatever they are saying. Some people do stay together uh, without uh, having got married. Uh, you know, your, your partners, you're living together. Uh, some people have been married legally in the courts and so forth. So that position also be different when it comes to a spouse dying without a will. Um, uh, we have had situations whereby a, a, an estranged spouse who has been living away for about five, 10 years, but still married to the deceased has been given uh, precedence in terms of uh, inheriting compared to the person who is staying with the deceased, but they have not been married. So those are some of the things that could then cause problems uh, for people within uh, within the community because they have not made their will. There's no clear cut succession that is there, and the interstate rules are being followed. Uh, the children are not benefiting anything, um, but um, that person who is deceased, deceased has got uh, lots of assets that are now being taken over by, by his brothers or by his parents without having regard to, um, to his family. So I think as much as we are still alive, we need to have to put up a will. Um, I do not have time to discuss at, at what is a will, the legality of it, how it is executed and so forth. But you can make a will yourself if you want, or you can go to a lawyer or to a will writer. Or, um, I mean, as long as um, it, it shows your intention and you have um, signed it and uh, it has been witnessed, uh, then uh, that, that will is, is legal and, and valid. So we have to put a succession plan, not only for our own families. Uh, do you know that you can make a will for your own business as well? You need to make your, a, a will for your own business. If you are a single person operating the business, you're the single shareholder, the single director and so forth. You have to have a continuation plan, a continuity plan for your business when you're running a business, you know. Uh, and you should make plans not only for when you die, you should make plans for uh, when you are still alive, you can make enough David uh, for or, or, or a, a, a lasting power of attorney, power of attorney. Because sometimes what will happen is, God knows I'm, I go home today after finishing talking to you, and um, 100 meters off my office, I get involved in a very serious car accident. I become brain damaged. I cannot uh, have the mental capacity to do anything myself. Um, if I do not have that power of attorney appointing someone to take over my affairs, then that power to deal with my estate and my properties goes uh, to uh, either the doctor to make medical decisions for me or to a judge to make economic and uh, commercial decisions for me. But where there is um, um, a power of attorney, then in terms of the power of attorney, even if I'm not yet uh, dead, um, that power of attorney will be giving power to someone else, whether it's your wife or your husband or a friend or a business colleague to at least run the affairs of your business um, um, in a proper manner so that it's either wound up or it's then handed over to um, whoever should be responsible for that. So succession is very important as well when it comes to us um, surviving in, 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 this, in, in this world, so to say. Something else that I want to comment on is, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, I said that uh, ignorance of the law is not taken to, to be a defense. And uh, sometimes people get themselves committing uh, offenses, either they commit the offenses or they omit to do something that will um, a result in them uh, having committed an offense, you know, um, um, uh, someone um, is guilty either by commission or, or, or omission. Um, so it's always good to know what the law of the state where you are says about a lot of things, particularly criminal uh, cases as well, because while, once you get a criminal conviction in certain jurisdictions, like um, here in, the, in England or America uh, or, or most jurisdictions really these days, uh, they look 
very seriously at your criminal conviction. Um, if you are to apply for a visa, for example, you want to go to Canada or Australia or New Zealand or America or the United Kingdom, even the South African ones, I've had a look at them as well, or Zimbabwe and sometimes, they will, they, they will ask, uh, do you have a criminal conviction? Um, and when was it committed? Are you rehabilitated uh, and so forth? So if you have a criminal conviction, your police clearance will not be clean. Um, and uh, with, with that, that clean police clearance and depending on the severity or seriousness of the offense that you have committed, you might not be able to work in certain uh, jobs. You might not be able to travel to certain countries. Um, and uh, some, some of the offenses that people have committed will be, like I've said, um, assaulting your family member who is uh, maybe um, your wife or maybe you have, you have, um, um, you have driven without a, 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 a driving license. You really know that you don't have a driving license. But you have uh, you have taken uh, that step of driving without a, a, a driving license, and uh, you are stopped by the police uh, at a traffic light, and uh, you 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 are convicted. So as much as we can, uh, brethren, I'm just appealing to you that uh, we should not commit um, these um, unnecessary criminal convictions if it comes along the way, because um, it, it has just happened by a force of nature force majeure, then you there's nothing you could have done under those circumstances. It's even important also to avoid unnecessary civil penalties or of, uh, having unnecessary court judgments against yourself. You know that, for example, if you use water, you need to pay for, for the water that you use, or if you use electricity. If you don't, then they are going to go to court and have a civil judgment against yourself. And some people do it because they want to be crooks, not to pay, and uh, just pay around they move from this house to the next house without necessarily paying for for their abuse and so forth but if it goes on your record maybe it will then affect uh, your credit scoring it will affect your credit history and your standing in society one day who knows you might want to stand in an, in an official um, election or in an official uh, post like uh, a, a councillor or an MP or um, you want to, and then they look at your history. You, 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 how can in, this person be an MP when he failed to pay 1,000 rands for water where you are staying? You know, so he's, he's not fit for purpose. He's not fit for 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 the office. Um, just checking my time. Um, I've got eight minutes left uh, to, to 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 continue talking. So. There is a lot of aspects of law that really affect our everyday life. And um, I'm just commenting on these things that I know that um, from experience and from observation, these things have come to affect um, us as individuals, um, as a family. Because if it affects uh, you as the father or the mother, then it's going to affect the other spouse. It's going to affect uh, the children. And um, well, once that happens, then there is... Um, a lot of stress that might be happening uh, within within the family. Another thing that I want to comment on um, is um, most of us, we are either in business or we are employed. If you are a business person, and I'll tell you as a, as a, as a testimony that if you are a business person, Try by all means to observe everything that needs to be done in the area of business that you are in. Don't try to cut corners that might come to, to, haunt, to haunt you or to, to hurt you. Um, I've come to a conclusion myself that I would rather have a 10% profit while I'm doing things correct than to have 120% profit when I know that I'm doing things wrong. Some of the things that we do, shortcuts, might come to, for example, if you were supposed to be servicing your cars or you're supposed to be servicing your, your, your vehicles or your machines and you are not and you're getting a lot of money from them, then someone gets hurts because of that car that um, was not being serviced. You're going to um, lose a lot in the sense that you're going to go to court, you're going to be sued for negligence, you're going to be sued for personal injury. Uh, someone has uh, died and so forth, the ETC. Um, if, if, if you were not registered and you were supposed to have registered yourself, then uh, the regulators might come and close your business. 
or they might come uh, and if you were faking your books of accounts for example they will now come with the forensic accountant to with the comfort of with the, with, the, with uh, the eyes of an ego to try to see where you were uh, cutting the corners the, the under declaring or non declaring declaring of the funds and so forth so where you are in business make sure your business is properly registered your, your business is properly operating you've got all the relevant insurances um, and you've got all the, 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 the relevant policies and paperwork um, everything is in place um, talking about insurances even in our own personal lives we still need to have policies like um, um, uh, you know um, a funeral policy uh, we don't have to be a burden to the church that you die without a policy and people have to be to have a, a meeting for three hours trying to arrange your 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 funeral uh, when there's a lot of policies that are available there to cover you and your family and, and traveling and, and 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 so forth so should they have uh, if possible even medical insurances uh, funeral insurances life cover insurances uh, dental cover insurances and so forth as much as we can afford them or as much as we can have them uh, the other thing that um, i was going to mention on the business is if if you are employed then there is also laws uh, that are there as an employee you are um, protected by the law there's the employment law that protects you um, there is uh, also the laws that are there uh, for for your health and your safety for your uh, progression um, to be treated uh, equally and fairly um, within the workspace within the work environment uh, that you are not discriminated or taken advantage of um, equality and so forth so in the workplace as well um, as Christians we should know that there is um, um, you, you, you do have rights um, I, I always um, hear people say you know uh, meekness is next to godliness and so forth um, being meek is not being stupid being meek is not being uh, taken advantage of you might be meek and, and soft but you have to know your rights so that people will not uh, strangle upon you and uh, there is uh, the courts that are there to protect you there is the uh, systems the human resources that are there to protect you and and to deal with any matters that might um, affect you so those are some of the areas of the law i mean law is is is, is, is as abundant as anything else wherever you look at there is law the thing that I want to comment on as well, um, maybe as my last part, is access to justice and access to law. Uh, we, we know sometimes that the law appears to favor the rich or the famous, uh, maybe because they've got the resources. But as individuals, we also have access to the law. We've got access to, to, to justice. I, I just I mentioned, for example, the work environment, where you think that in your work environment, um, you are not happy with someone with something else you can raise a grievance uh, to your line manager you can raise a grievance to your human resources and all things being equal then uh, your issue might be dealt with and um, so the law is supposed to protect everyone the law is there for everyone else and um, some to have, to have access to the law some people um, do pay uh, lawyers uh, to to be represented uh, by the lawyers uh, some will pay using cash or some will have got insurances a legal cover insurance so where you can you have a legal aid or a legal cover insurance so that you don't have to pay uh, lump sum because uh, lawyers can be expensive and some things can go forever you know so but if you are paying say monthly installments towards a, a, a legal insurance cover then uh, you might be covered for that um, there are also organizations that give free advice to people uh, who do it on a pro bono basis. Uh, so you can go to those organizations where you think that you have got something that needs to be resolved. And um, if, for example, you're a victim of domestic violence, there's also shelters that are there where people can go and uh, seek um, refuge in terms of um, fleeing away from the abusive uh, partner so there is ways of uh, getting access to to justice and um, you don't have always to you you, you, must, you you don't have to have a lawyer 
to have access to justice, but you can have access to justice by, by yourself. You can represent yourself. You can uh, get um, someone else to represent you. Uh, it might be someone who has got a bit of knowledge to, in the law or, um, are you, um, you know, um, voluntary organizations which are always there to represent people. Uh, with that, I come to my 30 minutes and I um, arrest my presentation.